Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Bitcoin up here on the daily really hasn't been moving too much. Uh, you know, I was reading on Twitter, some analysts are saying that we are seeing too many bounces bouncing off support, which means support is getting weaker, which would ultimately mean Bitcoin is set to make newer lows. Um, I mean, it's a possibility. The fact of the matter remains though, you know, this structure here, uh, not similar to any Bitcoin tops that we have seen in the past. And, you know, even just this fact, right, the low volume, we wouldn't have to have, I mean, if, if volume remains this way, we wouldn't have to have too many sellers sell Bitcoin off in order for prices to go um, relatively lower. Um, however, the same remains true for Bitcoin going higher. Low volume, a little bit of price activity, a little bit of buyer action could send prices soaring higher. So, you know, I'm still kind of in the wait and see phase. I'm still of the camp that believes Bitcoin will go higher. And uh, I know a lot of you guys follow the blockchain backer. He's in bearish territory for Bitcoin, but he's even still waiting for that Bitcoin retracement to go back up to the 0 0.702. So, you know, even in the worst case scenario, we see Bitcoin go up to the 0 0.702. That would bring Bitcoin back up to about 58,200, 58,300, give or take. And so, you know, that is when we would generally see the altcoins rally up to this point. We would see XRP make its all time high. And then the entire market theoretically should fall over on itself and uh, everything should collapse to the downside. Um, but right now we're just still holding. We're holding significant support. I do understand that support is uh, seeing more bounces, which uh, isn't necessarily good. Those bounces are becoming weaker. However, I would argue that, uh, you know, this whole time after this initial pullback for Bitcoin, this has all been weak activity in and around here. And that again, just denoted by the low volume. So weak activity, we did still see price reach a new all time high for Bitcoin, come back down, reaccumulation. And so, you know, still in a wait and see pattern. Uh, XRP still doing its thing, trading right now at about 78.2. So haven't seen too much movement for XRP or other altcoins for that matter. An interesting day today, news wise, uh, I wanted to start out with this guys from T-Hole Bedic XRP, ACA Finance. Now, if you guys remember, if you've been in the space for a few years now, they used to be called BitPesa. They are a Ripple partner and they have now partnered with crypto exchange FTX. Also, ACA Finance owns Ripple customer exchange for free and is partnered with Ripple customers Azimo, Boss Revolution as well. They are ODL, AKA IDT Corp, which I talked about this past week and Currency Cloud. So a few uh, partnerships there that uh, I think uh, are of note to mention, uh, crypto exchange giant FTX has partnered with AZA Finance, the payments firm formerly known as BitPesa, to grow the Web3 economy in the African continent. The partnership will explore five key areas for Web3 development in Africa, including offering support for deposits and withdrawals using African fiat currencies on the global FTX platform, according to a statement that was uh, produced on Wednesday, so a couple of days ago. Uh, it will also work to improve Africa's Web3 infrastructure while creating useful learning and networking resources for participants in the region. FTX and AZA Finance also plan to launch African digital currency trading pairs. So we are seeing uh, this infrastructure is uh, being put into place in the African continent and these uh, DLT blockchain related companies are uh, putting this in. Of course, they are seeing uh, new opportunities here for emerging economies. The fifth area of the collaboration involves non-fungible tokens with FTX planning to onboard African NTF artists to its marketplace. So it looks as though, uh, you know, they are not wasting any time getting fully integrated with the whole deal established back in 2013 as BitPesa. AZA Finance is the latest African crypto and payments company to attract interest from FTX in the latter's push to establish establish a footprint on the continent. So interesting to note here, uh, many different Ripple partner connections. As T. Holbedic mentioned originally in the tweet, BitPesa, uh, that is AZA Finance now, and they own Ripple Customer Exchange for free and is partnered with several other different uh, ODL partners like Azimo, Boss Revolution, that would be through IDT Corp and Currency Cloud. Now we're seeing them partner with FTX to roll out into Africa. Wanted to thank T. Holbedic for posting that. I also saw this guy's from Michael at Val 5 link. So this has to do with onxrp.com, a technology and content platform providing user-driven innovation to the XRPL and home to many NFT projects. They've now teamed up with Pastel Network. So here we go. Pastel Network, just down here, Pastel Network, a protocol for NFT technology. Uh, they offer enhanced security and a revolutionary NFT storage solution for their users. Together, Pastel and OnXRP will integrate tools 
tools on the XRP marketplace that aim to identify scammers by using Pastel's Sense protocol to authenticate NFT rareness and perform NFT duplication checks as well as to ensure data security and storage through its Cascade protocol. So it sounds like uh, this is going to be a tool uh, on the XRPL to be able to identify fraudulent NFTs. Uh, so Pastel's Sense protocol for near duplication NFT detection recognizes the most subtle similarities between two collectible items, even if one has been transformed. The protocol goes beyond the standard digital fingerprint approach uh, to establish the rareness of an NFT and actually looks at the rareness of the pixel patterns in data. So interesting to uh, see how they do that. I kind of like, you know, just separately, just I, I like to know how these things tend to work. Um, Sense takes digital fingerprints a step further by assuring a relative rareness score to quantify how rare an NFT is relative to all NFTs in the underlying data set. So uh, this product being produced on XRP.com, NFTs on the XRPL, and uh, so this is just another measure, I guess, to prevent fraud. Interesting to note that. I wanted to thank Michael for posting that. And this guy's from Ian Bins here on Twitter. Now, I know uh, in, in yesterday's video, I asked how many of you guys are also invested in XLM? and I got an outpouring of responses. It sounds as though a lot of you guys, uh, you know, are, are very much into XRP. Of course, XRP, a very popular cryptocurrency and has been over the last several years, but uh, many of you, and I was surprised about this, many of you say that your second largest bag of cryptocurrency is in XLM. Not a bad choice considering it is one of those World Economic Forum cryptocurrencies that uh, they did mention in their June 2021 report. Well, I thought I'd bring you guys this XLM. Ukraine uses Stellar to pilot new digital currency program, again, brought to us by Ian Bins. So, you know, despite what's going on in the Ukraine right now, their central bank is supervising a new digital currency pilot program using the Stellar blockchain. According to a press release by fintech firm Bit, it is working with Tascom Bank, which is one of Ukraine's oldest commercial banks, on a pilot project to create an electronic version of Ukraine's national currency, the Harvinya, on the Stellar blockchain. As part of this project, uh, the cross-company team will test the electronic Hervinia on the use cases of programmable payroll for public employees at DIA, an IT solutions enterprise, as well as for peer-to-peer -peer payments and merchant payments. The project is being supervised by the National Bank of Ukraine, and it has the support of the Ministry of Digital Transformation. So we are seeing this in the Ukraine. And I heard a little bit about this uh, platform, DIA. Um, from what I understand, this is an app that uh, they are rolling out in the Ukraine that is going to collect user information, digitize all citizen information. And uh, essentially, what I heard is that uh, the government wanted to put the, uh, the, the citizens of the Ukraine under a social credit score system similar to what they have in China, and I believe they are doing that through this app, the DIA app. If you guys have more information on that, I have not researched that in depth, but if you guys do have more information, please do put it down in the comments section. I would be interested uh, to read up more on that. But anyway, interesting to note that their central bank using the Stellar blockchain to implement this, uh, meanwhile, we have more information coming out of the Ripple XRP lawsuit. Another document has now proven that XRP is not a security. Just down here, guys, uh, this just came out. Somebody uh, revealed this on Twitter. Perkins Coy, an international law firm, did send out a 49-page document to William Hinman on March, whoops, on March 26, 2018, in a bid to provide legal advice on the classification of cryptocurrencies. So this was in and around the, the, the Hinman speech time in 2018, and excerpts of the letter read, a token by itself is never an investment contract. The investment contract arises from the understanding as to how the token will be developed in something of useful value. So I did a little more research uh, after seeing this article, and I did actually find that here, guys. This is from Bill on Twitter. The words you highlighted, a token by itself is never an investment contract. This was legal advice to Bill Hinman and the SEC before the Ethereum free pass speech. Yet, SEC lawyers in the Ripple case argued that XRP is a security per se, even in secondary markets. So he just retweeted out Ripple Eyes tweet here. According to the memo, Doge is just a meme coin and the token itself is never a security. So they're, they're talking about this in the context of Dogecoin. Uh, a token by itself is never an investment contract. Doge is simply a meme that can be transferred via blockchain operations. The investment contract arises from the understanding as to how the token will be developed into something of useful value. In this memorandum, we discuss the legal analysis, supporting our views, so on and so forth. So originally in this context, they're talking about Doge. However, this is the law firm Perkins Coy, who on the one hand is saying this about Dogecoin, but 
but uh, suggested otherwise to William Hinman at that point in time. Uh, there was also another gentleman, I forget who it was, another lawyer from Perkins Coy, who uh, kind of went against the grain and did suggest on the record at a public forum, I believe this was also in 2018, that he did not believe that XRP was a security. So conflicting statements from this law firm, uh, nevertheless, interesting to note that a token by itself is never on investment contracts. Somebody should bring this to the judge. Of course, we got many great uh, sleuths, Twitter sleuths as they're being called in the XRP community, shedding light on this subject from all angles. So uh, great news there, wanted to thank Ripple Eye, Bill here on Twitter, because if this is the case, I do think that uh, this evidence should be brought to light. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, Ripple's lawyers always, uh, you know, eyeing Twitter every now and then to get uh, perhaps some more information and more ammo uh, to help them along the way. Um, okay, so I also wanted to mention this from Michael at Val 5 Links, Ripple's ODL product, close to achieving global coverage. Now, this just came out the other day in the most recent episode of the Ripple Draw, published earlier on Thursday. Ashish Birla, general manager of the RippleNet network, said that the flagship on demand liquidity product was close to achieving global coverage. The service, which was formerly known as XRapid, is currently operating in 22 destination markets, according to Birla. The executive couldn't be happier with the growth experienced by RippleNet. The network wrapped up 2021 with a payment volume run rate of more than $10 billion. And so this is what Birla actually had to say about Ripple's success in 2021, the liquidity hub, and that Ripple basically has global coverage. Listen to this. So Ashish, 2021 was a really big year for on-demand liquidity. We're going to talk about that in a second, but let's get back to the basics, you know, the foundations of the market in general. What is liquidity and why is on-demand liquidity important? That's a, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, at the very, very beginning, uh, when there was Bitcoin, uh, the first thing you wanted to do was make Bitcoin liquid. And what that meant was uh, you can interchange it for US dollars. And that is facilitated through uh, something called a crypto exchange. Uh, Coinbase, Bitstamp, Bitso, and LATAM are exchanges and they facilitate liquidity. And the great thing about crypto liquidity is that it's easier to move around the world uh, compared to something like uh, fiat currency uh, that needs a large number of banks and central banks to make it liquid and move around the world. So that's a great thing about crypto is that it's way more liquid and over the years it's becoming more and more liquid. You know, if you look at the market today, uh, hundreds of billions of dollars in cryptos traded on a daily basis. That is up from 2013 when it wasn't, wasn't even crossing a billion dollars of liquidity. As we see more and more crypto liquidity come into the market, uh, we're able to offer a better product experience. That means you can send cross-border payments uh, for a cheaper rate. And that's the great thing. And what we've seen in the crypto market is that about every year, the amount of liquidity doubles. And so again, that is a great thing because it's a better user experience for our customers. What kind of growth? Just gonna stop it there for one second. So Ashish Birla focusing on liquidity, 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 you know, something that we've been hearing out of the Ripple camp for years now. And, you know, the fact that not just with regards to XRP and uh, XRP liquidity, but, you know, he's kind of starting this conversation off uh, talking about broader liquidity in the crypto market. And you heard those numbers. Uh, it's growing. It's almost doubling year by year. In 2013, we only had about a billion dollars of liquidity in the crypto market. Now we're in the hundreds of billions of dollars. And so, you know, it sounds as though he is setting this up in terms of uh, RippleNet and how XRP liquidity is really going to be beneficial to be able to provide markets with services, to be able to provide governments and financial institutions the ability to transfer anything of value from point A to point B utilizing RippleNet. Anyway, let me continue with this clip. Listen to this next part. This is great. Growth have you seen on RippleNet in 2021? So I couldn't be happier with the year that we had uh, in 2021 with RippleNet. Uh, we ended the year at a $10 billion run rate in terms of volume moving through RippleNet uh, as a whole. And we're in 22 destination markets with on-demand liquidity. And that was a core piece of feedback that we heard from customers. They want that product, but they want it in more destinations. We're close to having global coverage of ODL, which is super exciting. So there you have it from Ashish Birla. We're close to having global coverage. 22 markets, 22 rails. And, uh, you know, the only criticism 
from their customers is that we wish we had it in more markets. We want to be able to source XRP uh, and be able to provide payments into more markets. And so, you know, this is sounding like a very, very great year for Ripple. 2021, it almost seems like every year things just get better and better for the company and, uh, you know, for providing that liquidity. Liquidity is paramount for RippleNet to work. And you know, to get that XRP in the market, the demand is really what's going to drive XRP price. Meanwhile, you and I, XRP hodlers, we're hodling, waiting for the demand to hit because once that demand hits, that will be the time we sell and maybe not even, I mean, maybe we will hold our XRP. Who knows what the future holds, but I'm sure some of you guys are planning on selling some of your XRP once you hit your targets. Anyway, that's the theory, global markets, global coverage. It does sound like Ashish Birla uh, is very happy that this is occurring. I know personally, I'm happy as an XRP hodler. I also just wanted to bring this to you guys uh, real quick. King Solomon, breaking news, XRP has always been the effing standard. That's why it's being regulated first. I never thought of it that way. XRP, the only real cryptocurrency that is in court with this, um, you know, everybody, everybody in the industry is eyeing this lawsuit, at least in the US, realizing that this, this case is going to have an impact on the rest of the crypto market. Uh, retweeting this out, March 2022, we're close to having a global coverage of ODL from that clip that we just saw. Uh, and just down here from Eric Robinson, wanted to also bring this up. Look at the drop in SWIFT payments in January compared to November and December. So I got December up here, December 2021, year to date, and we can see SWIFT payments, payments at 4.7 trillion and securities at 4.2 trillion. And that is uh, payment securities, right? And then down here, uh, Europe and the Middle East and Africa regions, we're seeing 4.6 and 4.4 respectively. So let's just take a look at payments for a second. The next month, so again, this is December 2021, the very next month, look at what we saw, $3.9 billion. Wait a minute, did that just go down to billion? I thought I said trillion up here. Oh my God, it did. Okay, I thought that the number was, bill. wow. That's a bigger drop than I originally thought. So that is, yeah, that's trillion dollars, 4.7 trillion down to, okay, so this is January, 2022. That's gotta be a typo. I, I don't know, that, anyway, regardless, it's less. So let's call it $396 billion. Uh, securities at 451 billion. Uh, if we look here, yeah, 5.2 trillion. Boy, that's a significant decrease. Um, that's even surprising me right now. <laughs> Take a look at the uh, at the Europe, Middle East, and African markets: 4.6 trillion and 4.4 trillion down here to 405 billion. And America's in the UK, 356 billion respectively. So these are swift payments in these markets, and we can see a huge decline in one month. I mean, I feel like that's a typo. Uh, even if it's not, it still would be a decline, albeit not by nearly as much. Nevertheless, I think it does paint an interesting picture. Swift payments are going down. This again on the heels of this statement from Ashish Birla saying, you know, on-demand liquidity becoming more and more popular worldwide. The fact that RippleNet now has virtually almost all global coverage for their ODL service. That just means we're going to see more demand for XRP which means that will drive the price higher. That's supply and demand fundamentals, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And guys, I really wanna hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2022. Let's see if we can make it happen. So if you find yourself watching the videos and maybe you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe. Hit the like button if you guys like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.